Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Kyle here again. Um, I'm here today with a very special piece. This uh, was my first Rolex ever. It was given to me by my cousin Tim. This piece is a 1980s era Air King, reference 5500. He purchased it in 1988. I don't know how long the watch sat in the dealer before he uh, actually made the purchase, so I'm not sure if it's a 1988 model watch, but that was the year that it was purchased. What we're gonna do here today is just unbox this watch. Before we break into the piece, we can just speak a little bit about the history of the Air King. Uh, this reference 5500 came out in 1957, and it ran for 37 years before they replaced it. In the current catalog, if you wanted something similar to this piece, you would be going for the Oyster Perpetual. Uh, this basically transitioned into and morphed into what the modern day OP is. Uh, there is still a watch called the Air King in uh, the modern lineup. However, it doesn't look anything like this piece. This watch came with a number of different options. There was actually a date version uh, available. You could get this watch, I believe, on either an Oyster or a Jubilee bracelet. I've seen, I, I know somebody who has a Jub Jubilee braceleted uh, date model. It's, it's actually a two-tone, very rare, and that one's also 34 millimeters. So is this. When they originally came out with this watch, it was it's called the Air King because it was marketed and, and geared towards aviators and pilots. It is a time-only watch and has no complications. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the appeal was for pilots, but nevertheless, it is the Air King and the name lives on today. As far as the packaging goes, I think it's pretty much a full kit. He's got the original receipt, um, all of the papers that came with the watch when it was new. Uh, of course, the watch itself, there is only one extra link uh, with this piece. Um, I haven't needed it. It fits me perfectly. Uh, and I, I love this watch. I still wear it to this day. So without further ado, let's get into it. And as I mentioned before, he gave it to me with the full kit, uh, outer box, inner box, everything. So yeah, we'll take a look at this later, but this is like a catalog that came with it at that time. This is the uh, little sleeve. It has the um, one year warranty that the watch came with. After purchase, we've even got the business card here. Bailey Banks and Biddle in the Del Amo Fashion Square. Steve Tanaka, looks like was the sales rep. And this authorized dealer is no longer in business. And this is the original purchase receipt. As you can see there, the price new was $945 and the after-tax total was just over $1,000 for a brand new Rolex. Today the cheapest watch they make is over $5,000. So yeah, I think that's a pretty Pretty fair deal. Wish you could still get one for a thousand dollars. Okay. All right. Now we'll get into the watch itself. And just to be clear, this is, this is not the first time that I have 
unboxed to this watch. I've had this watch now for a while. I'm just now getting around to doing a video on it. Here's the cloth, the, the cleaning cloth that they provided you with at purchase. Rolex Tudor, Rolex Cellini. All of those, of course, are still in existence today. Original hang tag. Pretty cool. Actually, this portion of the box comes out as well. And here's the watch. If you've seen maybe some of my other videos, I I believe I've actually been wearing this watch. I wore this watch to go pick up my 2020 Submariner. But this time we can showcase this watch exclusively. There's the one extra link that I have for it. This watch, I don't believe it has ever been serviced. It was worn pretty heavily through the years. I believe it was his only watch, my cousin's only watch for, I would say, a, a 15 years, at least, maybe 20, until he got something else. It's an oyster bracelet, so uh, it's not going to have the same types of issues that some of the older gold uh, let's say president bracelets and, and, and that had, uh, as far as stretch goes, but if you've handled any modern Rolexes and then you handle more of a vintage piece like this, you can tell that there are quite a few differences. Uh, the heft to a modern piece is, is certainly, I think the first thing that you would notice, this is a very light watch, uh, even considering its size. Um, buddy of mine has a 34 millimeter, uh, brand, brand new. Well, I shouldn't say brand new, but it's a couple of years old. It's a modern, uh, six digit 34 millimeter oyster perpetual. And it's a much more hefty piece than, than this is a lot more girth to it and it is a lot more substantial. Now, I've had a few issues recently with the clasp um, and I've kind of tooled around with it myself with my watch kit and I've got it working here. Uh, but I've been toying with the idea recently of taking this watch in to RSC here in Beverly Hills and perhaps sending it off for a service polish, potentially get a new bracelet. The service starts at $700 uh, or around there. And the bracelet, uh, if the rep on the phone was correct, they're about $1,000. So considering the fact that I didn't pay anything for this watch, perhaps it's a good idea to uh, put a little money into it and ensure that it's gonna run you know, maybe for another 30 plus years. Um, so, anyway. I think one thing to address is, uh, with this piece, is the size. A lot of people uh, feel like a 34 millimeter watch is too small for a man to wear today. I don't necessarily agree with that. Like I said, a friend of mine, he's probably got a wrist about the same size as, as, as mine. He's about as, he's about the same build as me. Uh, he has a 34 millimeter watch and it looks really good on him. He wears a suit. It looks great. If I had my choice between a 34 and a 36 millimeter Oyster Perpetual, which would be the modern 
rendition of this piece, I would go with a 36 millimeter. Uh, but having said that, I don't think there's any problem with wearing a 34 millimeter watch today, uh, depending on the size of your wrist. I mean, if you've got a wrist that's, you know, over seven and a half inches, it's probably going to look pretty dinky on you and you might want to up it to either the 36 millimeter or even uh, the 39, which has been now discontinued or the 41 millimeter that is the current largest offering in the Oyster Perpetual lineup. Uh, the newest Air King is a black dial watch, looks nothing like this, and I believe they're 40 millimeters. So, anyway, we can put it on my wrist here. And See how it fits. So for me, I don't feel like there's any issues with this watch's size. Um, I think it's fine. And there's, as you can tell, there's a nice taper to the bracelet really adds to the comfort on wrist. Uh, overall, a very, very comfortable watch. I don't like watches with dates on them anyway, so I really like this piece because if it does stop, all you have to do is wind it and set the time. You don't have to worry about setting date and, my goodness, setting day of the week. Full one-year warranty. Rolex Watch USA Inc. certifies that this Rolex is in perfect condition and warrants the dependable functioning of this entire watch for the period of one year from the date of purchase. This warranty does not cover loss, tampering, mistreatment, or modification through the addition of substitution of parts or accessories not supplied by Rolex. Take a look through the catalog here. Your Rolex Oyster. <laughs> there you go, Everest. How about that? Officially certified chronometer. Quartz. <laughs> Won't find that today. There we go, Placido Domingo. Oyster bracelets, the President bracelets. World Headquarters. This does feature, of course, the older Rolex stamped clasp. And, of course, it's not as robust as what they're offering today, but I think it's still, it still more than gets the job done. It did for, what is that, 34 years now. Uh, it's worked. It's getting up there. It's almost as old as me. Tell me what you guys think. Should I take this watch in? Because I know that there's the camp that says, don't ever touch your watch. Don't do anything to it. Don't polish your watch. Don't change anything out, you know? And I, I'm not planning on changing anything like the dial or the, the markers or the hands or any of that. It all looks really good. So I don't think there's any point in doing that. But let me know what you think. And uh, I'll take other people's thoughts into consideration because I'm on the fence. I don't know exactly what to do. What prompted this is not only the bracelet, which is uh, the clasp itself is not in the greatest shape. 
it's actually fallen off of my wrist a couple of times. And it seems to be running a little bit slow these days. And when I first got it, it was, it was running quite a bit fast. Now it's running slow, so I, th I think it's kind of all over the place. Um, I, I don't, don't think it's within spec. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. That's uh, about all I had for this one. Hope you enjoyed it, taking a look. It's like a blast from the past. I mean, we got everything here, all the box and paperwork. So, uh, yeah. Once again, thanks for stopping, stopping by the channel. And we will catch you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.